welcome to this beautiful morning in September and if you watch my videos of recent you will see that I recently sold my Lotus 6 Siege V6S and at the end of that video I said that I was going to replace it with a very similar equally exciting car to drive and I'm pleased to say that I can now reveal that car I've just had it delivered in the last couple of days and now I'm going to show you the car to replace the Lotus Exige V6S and here it is. It is the beautiful Alfa Romeo 4C Spider. To me it's definitely a step in the right direction and I'm going to be telling you all about it. I'll tell you why I think it's a step in the right direction for me. I absolutely love this car. I fell in love with it the minute I saw it and it's literally just been delivered. So we're going to take it out for a ride and uh, see what it's like. I'm pretty nervous at the moment. smooth gear change actually it's certainly a wider car but a shorter car oh I love that turbo wine I really do love the turbo the sound of the turbos on it you get some cool air coming in I don't know how you uh, read the fuel gauge on this I've got water temperature air temperature oh that's the fuel gauge on the left hand side on the right hand side there so okay well this is a really comfortable drive oh I've got a uh, tire pressure low warning oh, that's not good Gonna have to uh, turn around and go back, I think. Damn. It's saying low tyre pressure. We can see this low tyre pressure on all of four tyres. Uh, that is not good. Uh. Well, unfortunately. Our initial first run in this lovely Alfa Romeo has been cut short. The tyre warning lights come on on all four tyres saying that they are below pressure. Um, I've done about three or four miles when the warning light came on. So we're going to go back, we'll get the tyres checked, um, we'll wait for the traffic to die down and then we'll have a we'll try again probably very early in the morning. We're back on the road. I've been back. I checked all of the tyre pressures and amazingly all four tyres were indeed 8 to 10 psi below the correct pressures. So the TPS system was absolutely correct. Uh, the tyres, all four tyres were, were low. Um, now normally as someone buying a pretty well new car from an official dealer uh, you'd be pretty upset by that to have a car delivered with all four tyres low but as an Alfa Romeo owner I realise that this is par for the course that the reason that the tyre pressures were all low was purely to test the tyre pressure system and to assure me that it was indeed working correctly the other thing I noticed was the washer bottle. Um, it was completely empty. Now again, if you were the owner of a certain set of German cars that you'd had delivered with the washer bottle completely empty, you'd probably be pretty upset. However, again, as an Alfa Romeo owner, I realise that that is Alfa Romeo dealership's way of showing me how to top up the washer bottle, which incidentally on this model is not easy. It involves taking four screws out of a panel underneath the windscreen and then topping up the bottle and putting the panel back again. 
And then finally, when I came to start the car, one of the glitch I had um, after a day of it sitting in the garage was I couldn't get any of the gears. Uh, all I got was an error message saying, gear not selectable. Now, again, most people with other brands of cars would probably find this pretty annoying and take it back to their dealer. But as an Alfa Romeo owner, I realise that that is a security feature because should someone try to steal my car, even if they've got the keys, they can't engage the gears. I did find out the sequence to solve that problem and there is a way to actually get the gears engaged it's just a matter of following a certain sequence anyway let's go out there and uh, and enjoy the car now i'm gonna pull over in a minute we'll have a few minutes just to show you around the car and what i like particularly about it but certainly i can say from driving it um, there's a lot of things that really make me smile about this car Firstly, when I look over the bonnet of the car, I see the wings of a Ferrari 360. When I look through the wing mirrors of the car, I can see the air intakes of a Ferrari 430. So really, this car very much reminds me of some of the iconic supercars out there for a fraction of the price. But let's, uh, let's go and pull over and take a few minutes to show you some of the features of this particular one that I really like and why it really won me over. Starting with the outside of the car, there is no denying that this is one of the most beautiful cars on the market. Uh, even the most critical of car journalists agrees that this is definitely a stunning car to look at. Look at this, the multi-spoked Alfa Romeo wheels, really nice. At the back here we've got the lovely twin exhausts. Okay, if we look in the, the boot of the car, we've got a little uh, lever here. Let's just have a look in the boot. We've got a lever here that opens up the boot. And if we, very, very similar to the Lotus this, if we look in the boot here, it's not particularly big, um, but it's enough to, it's about the same actually, it's about exactly the same storage area as you would have had in the Lotus. Uh, very, very similar boot space. And there is, of course, the very clean, in more ways than one, Alfa Romeo 4C1750 engine. So it's a very, very clean engine as i say i mean that in more ways than one because it's also extremely low emissions now one of the key things that made a difference to the look of the spider for me were the headlights if you look at the headlights on this car they are different from that of the coupe version the reason being that on the coupe they're like led clusters whereas on this version they are proper bulb headlights let's just give you a quick tour inside the car some of the things i like Firstly, the seats. I really do like the seats in this car. Uh, very nice, very comfortable to be in. Uh, again, you've got the leather with the red stitching in it to match the body. You've also got the Alfa Romeo emblem in the seats as well, in the headrests on both seats. They are comfortable to sit in because you can adjust the incline of the seat here and you can adjust also the position of the seat backwards and forwards. So uh, compared to the Lotus that's a really uh, a really nice feature. So it's quite a comfortable place to be. Obviously we've got the cutting edge carbon fibre tub here and there's loads of carbon fibre uh, visible when you look at the car um, you can really see that this is genuinely cutting-edge technology the steering wheel really really like this it really feels extremely nice to use uh, you've got the flat bottom here uh, you've also got the thumb rests which are very very nicely bolstered so it's a really comfortable steering wheel to uh, to hold 
So let's move on to the dashboard. And this for me was the real deal clincher. This is what made me want to buy this particular car because all of the Alfa Romeo 4Cs that I'd been to look at had a plastic dashboard, very much like that used by Lotus. But this particular one, the dealer had ordered it with a leather dash with red matching, uh, body color matching stitching. So as you can see, I don't know whether you're picking this up very well on the video here, but all of the dash across the front is stitched. And it really gives the car a real quality feel that justifies its price. Um, it makes a big, big difference to me to have this. I also like the, uh, the digital display as well. Um, it gives me loads of information about what's going on with the car, interior and exterior. It's giving me the time, the outside temperature, tyre pressure monitoring, uh, lots of information coming through on the dash and I really do like the way that's set up. Um, so yeah, that's a nice little feature with loads of functions on it. And most importantly for me, of course, you can take the roof off. So there you are, that is my brief introduction to my new replacement for the Lotus Exige V6S. I will be doing uh, a video about how it compares with the Lotus, what I particularly found better with the Lotus and what I particularly find better with the Alfa Romeo. So if you're interested in how it stacks up against the Lotus, look out for that video. I'll probably do it in the next week or so. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to take this car for a little drive and have some fun with it. Um, hope you like the choice. Um, I will be doing more videos on this car, telling you how it goes, what the ownership experience is like, etc. We will be doing that. But uh, yeah, in the meantime, I, I hope you like the car. I hope you think I've made the right choice. And thanks for watching.